is up everybody Solomon here I hope you guys are having a fantastic day uh, first and foremost so I did a video yesterday on Tata consultancy services their court solution and the VP of that courts initiative through Tata basically talking about the tokenization of everything the timing is really interesting with some of this stuff and obviously I'm not sitting here alluding to the fact that any small content creator is is making these organizations put things out. Um, I did something similar with the Bank of Russia uh, about 12 days ago. And then immediately after that Bank of Russia, we hear, you know, breaking news, Biden administration report, reportedly malls cutting Russia off of the SWIFT system. It's just really kind of interesting to me. Today, we did see that Tata put out a new document regarding settlements. Now, this is for their court solution. So this is blockchain distributed ledger technology and digital asset enabled. And this is talking about over-the-counter trade settlements typically being characterized by a host of challenges, including delays, operational inefficiencies due to the involvement of multiple inter intermediaries, continuous exchange of messages between those intermediaries, and high transaction costs. Um, that problem normally is further, uh, further accentuated by a duplication of information uh, in siloed legacy platforms. A lack of access to real changes in trade status, which leads to the need for daily reconciliation routines, manual intervention, and obviously a, just a lack, of in, uh, a lack of efficiency across the board. Talks about delays in settlement, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, now, this is just talking about reimagining trade settlement on blockchain. Uh, and this is talking about settlement going through blockchain, going through distributed ledger technology, going through digital assets. These are central security depositories. These are brokers, more brokers, custodians, custodians, which could be banks or a number of different financial institutions. And some of the benefits of utilizing blockchain, DLT, and digital assets, which are, you know, the ability to process and settle transactions in real time, which is T plus zero, increased transparency, and improved efficiencies. I mean, you kind of get the picture here uh, and the quartz advantage. We did show yesterday, obviously, that RippleNet is tied into quartz. So is R3. So it's Hyperledger and, you know, it's just alluding to where this thing goes. So I'm going to move forward a little bit here. I did want to touch base on this briefly just because Quant put out their year in review. This is from Gilbert Verdian, the head of Quant, uh, talking about the full release of version 2.0, which enables community developers and users to benefit from using simple and standard interfaces to access all the supported DLTs within Overledger, uh, which include Ethereum, XRP, and Bitcoin mainnets. Now, we also know that Quant is partnered with Alliance Block. I would pay attention to that Unizen initiative where we can see both Quant, the head of Quant and the head of Alliance Block being um, not only partners, but advisors into Unizen as well. Unizen obviously has a, has a token. So moving forward a little bit here, uh, I wanted to give a huge shout out to the Hedera Hashgraph NFT ecosystem. Uh, they did, there was a community party a couple of days ago with Hedera Hashgraph, uh, Lehman Baird and uh, Mance and Christian Hasker and a lot of the uh, the bigwigs at Hedera were involved in this. And um, HBAR Spaces, just a huge shout out to you guys. HGraph Punks posted this. So there was 344198 which equivalented out to $91,500 donated to charity based on this NFT sale. Um, so I wanted to take a minute and just, you know, say thank you to all of the participating parties within that, which included uh, Fugitives Club, NFT Jesus, Lehman Club, H Bar of the Moon, Cosmic H Birds, Peak Panda Syndicates, Meta Zombies, H Borgs, La Lazy Superheroes, Hashgraph Cards, Hedera Hash Browns, H Barmery, H Bar Shady's Little Monkey as well. If I missed anybody, I apologize, but just a, a great initiative and, you know, being able to donate, I believe. The organization that they donated to um, doubt in domestic abuse, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that that was the end charity that they that they chose to donate the funds to. And I would love to see something like this come about within the XRPL projects as well. And I actually got a message from from one of the Hedera projects today uh, asking if uh, if they could speak with one of the XRPL projects to potentially set up some sort of a charity initiative. And I think that it shines a really valuable light on kind of what these ecosystems are doing, regardless of your opinion on NFTs or not. Um, moving forward, though, I'm, I'm not affiliated with HGraph Punks, but their their set one drop is today as well. So I know there's a lot of things that I don't participate in. 
I try to participate in as many as I can. I try to participate in ones that I think have that longevity aspect to them. And this to me is one of them. So I'm going to try to participate in this when it's at five o'clock Eastern standard time today. I think it's 200 H bar per mint. Um, so yeah, hopefully I can get a couple of these, not financial advice, obviously. Uh, and then moving forward into H graph punks as well. Like what you really, what I think a lot of like kind of the disillusion with some of these NFT projects is, you know, some of them certainly are just generative art. Some of them are trying to build out and have utility for these NFTs within a gamified ecosystem. Some of them grant you access into other things. Um, I look even through what HGraph Punks has been doing, and you know they've set up an LLC which is called Turtle Moon, Tur Turtle Moon, and they're essentially building out tools for the Hedera Hashgraph ecosystem so that new people can come into this space and have that ease of uh, operation and and the the ability to innovate within this space. Um, so they're building out tools and they're they're literally going to open source them so that people can try to participate in these networks. And I think that that is very, very necessary. So again, kudos. Um, kind of going towards Hedera again here, uh, one of the HBAR Foundation grants that was just gifted, not gifted, but given um, based on the mechanisms that this Metaverse project are doing. So I would pay attention to Metaverse. I also saw an interesting article from Boeing a couple of days ago talking about Boeing Vowing to enter the metaverse, um, link virtual three-dimensional digital twin replicas of its jets. And as we know, Boeing is also a governing board member of Hedera Hashgraph. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, just kind of a smorgasbord of information over the past couple days. Again, gigantic thank you and kudos to the Hedera Hashgraph NFT community. Um, that's just a, that's a, it's a really, really great thing. And I think that that's going to shine a lot of light on what's going on within within Hedera from the NFT space. Um, yeah, and you know, that's that's not a small amount of money. That's gonna that's gonna really help a lot of people. So um, thank you guys and uh, I appreciate it and we will uh, be talking when, when I talk to you next. All right, later.